Hi there, my name is Damian Garcia Serra. And I'm Anthony Rivas. And we're here to walk you through a step-by-step -step procedure to make a chemical engineering student schedule for the next semester. When you open up the step-by-step -step procedure file, you want to click on the tab that says step-by-step -step procedure. Once there, make sure you're at the top of the sheet. The first step in filling out a chemical engineering curriculum schedule is to pick the semester that you are trying to schedule, spring or fall. Scroll down to the bottom of the table. Here you will find the out of control section. Once you've seen this, create a template schedule. We have provided a template to the right of the cannot conflict table in the appropriate semester. This is our template in a new sheet. Prior to entering the courses into the schedule, be sure the periods hours column is up to date because this will indicate the course's period for that semester. Now take the corresponding course code and insert it into the appropriate block. Each class goes in an individual cell for each block it takes up. The other empty cells in this template are for other classes, as you will soon see. After you've done this, you can now move on to step two. Looking at the semester that you are attempting to schedule, you can see a list of numbered and colored conflicts. This can be overwhelming at first, but it is fairly simple if we break it down. Each possible grouping of courses has a designated conflict column, color, and number. For example, if a student's next courses in the sequence are transport and COT, they cannot be scheduled at the same time, as you can see here in column 5, colored in purple. You want to make sure that these conflicts are kept up to date. For example, safety was just recently added as a co-requisite for Unit Ops 1, meaning these cannot be scheduled at the same time. If there is a new conflict, just add a new column, number, and color of highlighted courses to the right of the cannot conflict table. Moving on to step 3a. This schedule will mainly depend on our placement of unit ops 1 and 2, which will be scheduled at the same time. The unit ops labs have to be scheduled on four hour blocks every day of the week. We have four options for the periods of unit ops which are listed here. We have all mornings, all afternoons, two mornings and three afternoons, or three mornings and two afternoons. Open up a template schedule and insert the unit ops course in the designated blocks. Once you've chosen your option, move on to part B, undergraduate student scheduling. Depending on your semester, the courses listed under fall or spring are the ones that have the highest number of total conflicts. These are the courses they should schedule first. In order to schedule them, make sure you read the additional information in the periods hours column. This column explains any conditions that must be satisfied for each course. Using this data and your already filled unit ops blocks, begin inserting these courses. Once you have finished with the courses that most conflict, you want to move on to the courses that have the next highest total conflicts. This is usually the graduate level coursework. This is done by taking the same steps as before. Look at your conflicts, your periods hours column, and insert the course appropriately in your schedule. Once you're finished with your graduate level coursework, move on to finishing the undergraduate coursework. Once you have finished scheduling the remainder of the undergraduate courses, you should be finished with your first schedule. Okay, we're just about done with the tutorial. Now you have the tools to create a fully functioning chemical engineering schedule. We thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the schedule making process. This message is brought to you by Optimize Prime, Optimizing your schedule since 2014.